Minnesota Timberwolves making the first blockbuster trade. A lot of teams, their media day was today on uh, Monday. And, uh, you know, you're not expecting any trades over the re- weekend right before media day. And they did it. They're sending um, the Minnesota Timberwolves are uh, sending Carl Anthony Towns to New York. And New York is sending Julius Randle and Dante DiVincenzo to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Basically, it's a salary dump. They can't afford to pay Cat. And so they basically got rid of him. They've got rid of one great all-star level player for two decent starters, starter level players. Uh, DiVincenzo will come off the bench. But with Mike Conley's age, I think it'll be DiVincenzo playing a lot of minutes, uh, getting almost starter minutes by coming off the bench and relieving Mike Conley, being able to rest Mike Conley and have him play uh, you know, not such a heavy load, I think will be good for the Timberwolves. So the Timberwolves got death, depth and contract flexibility with uh, Randall being an expiring contract. And the Knicks desperately needed a center with Mitchell Robinson being out. He's going to be out for, you know, undetermined amount of time. It could be two months. It could be six months. And you don't want to roll the dice and not have no center. So they got the big cat. You know, he's the only guy available right now, probably the best center that they could get. He's played power forward or center his whole career. And uh, they're going to have a lot of floor spacing. And they say, you know, yeah, the big cat sucks at uh, defense. But with having all the wing defenders with OG uh, Ananubi, uh, Michael Bridges, and Josh Hart, they said that they'll be enough to cover up uh, the cat's uh, mishaps when it comes to the defensive end. Exactly. But we got a video right here. Basically, of media day. We got Josh Hart and a couple of other players. Basically, let you know how they feel about their new teammate. Well, report. You got cat? <laughs> oh, wow. It's crazy. I was always a Knicks fan. Um, obviously, being a Jersey boy, too. I just grew up in the Knicks hysteria, you know, and just the, the vibe and the culture and the energy. So it was one of those things that, you know, playing Madison Square Garden was like the, the greatest honor in the world where I'm from. So, uh, you know, was a Knicks fan, and you know, I ended up in Minnesota. The Knicks were one of the only teams that gave my dad a chance out of college. He actually made a training camp squad, and he uh, broke his ankle uh, after one of the practices, and obviously his career uh, never happened. Uh, became a coach, but you know, just knowing that the Knicks saw my dad as you know talent worthy of being in their gym, that was a huge honor to me. And um, I just wanted to kind of, in my mind, finish the steps he had. You know, he made it to training camp, put all that work in, went through college, busted people up, getting blocks, Bust. getting rebounds, and all of a sudden he makes it to the league and. You know, career has gone like that. So I was like, maybe I could finish that. Maybe I could keep the legacy going and uh, finish what he started. Did you say hi to Carl when he got here? Excuse me? Did you say hi to Carl when he got here? Who's Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know who that is. Don't know who that is. Don't know who that is. Oh, that's hilarious. But I mean, this. so with this trade going on, who do you think are the winners and losers? Uh, my immediate reaction over time, I think it's more of an even trade, kind of both teams winning by getting what they wanted. The uh, Wolves really didn't want to go into the uh, the next apron in the salary cap because there is a hard cap, and they didn't want to face all those harsh penalties. So the Wolves did get that uh, cap flexibility, and the Knicks desperately needed a center. Julius Randle, honestly, they didn't have a position for him. They have OG probably playing the four. So Julius Randle would either have to play like uh, off the bench or be like a backup five uh, or a small ball five until Mitchell came. Mitchell Robinson came back. So Julius Randle honestly wasn't going to start, and they needed a center. Uh, so I think this trade does it. I don't think they wanted to get rid of DiVincenzo because he was part of the Villanova, you know, the, the Nova Knicks. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of funny that they never got to play one game together. True. <laughs> um, but, you know, we're going to see what happens. Well, I can't wait to see the Knicks versus Joel and B versus Big Cat. That's, oh, yeah. That's, that's going to be a game. Two people that hate being in the post. Two people that have sweated the next to Steph Curry. I think they both dunked on each other. It's just like it. who's going to be aggressive that game. Yeah, who's more interested? Oh, but they said that they feel like the Knicks did this trade because uh, they maybe got rumors that someone else was trying to uh, talk to uh, Minnesota to get Cat. Because apparently the they were shopping Cat pretty hard. No, the Lakers aren't making I mean, they said uh, Big Cat did buy a new home in California with his girlfriend. That's because all the players just live in California, which is crazy because they get like a three-month off season. So you're only you're going to have a home 
where you're only there three months out of the year. Basically. And especially you go on vacation, you're going to be there like two months out of the year. But, I mean, so with this team, I'm going, we're going to start with the Knicks first. So, I mean, they're going to have, so let me see, they're going to they gonna have. Um, Their starting lineup will be Jalen Brunson at the one, uh-huh. Josh Hart at the two, Michael Bridges at the three, OG Ananubi at the four, and um, the Big Cat at the five. Now, their eventual starting lineup, if Mitchell Robinson gets back healthy in a couple months, I think Mitchell will start at the five, Big Cat at the four, OG at the three, Michael at the two, Jalen at the one with Josh Hart coming off the bench. Now, so a- that would be a pretty nasty lineup as far as having size, athleticism, defense, and shooting because everyone could shoot besides Mitchell. And then if you go with the lineup, everyone could shoot besides Josh Hart, and he's streaky. So every once in a while, I'll have a game where he hits like two or three threes. Now, I'm thinking about this. One of the, with the Knicks going against Boston, I mean, they're going to match up because the Boston really don't have a big man at all that I can really think of besides – I don't even know. If, well, they I, said I that Big Cat is, is going to basically be like their Przingis. So they might even still go with that other lineup and have Mitchell Robinson come off the bench and be a backup big. I could see them doing that and staying with the lineup with Josh Hart at the two, Michael at the three, and OG at the four. And then when they play the Miami Heat, I could see them being Miami because you get, all they got is Bam. And well, I, I mean, the, the thing that's going to be so tough about New York is they have two some of the best wing defenders. It's almost like yeah. with Kawhi and Paul George playing the three and the four. Like they're going to be guard, yeah. They're going to be able to guard the other, uh, the two other teams' best, uh, you know, guards or wing defenders, no problem. And that's what you know, Michael and OG are going to do. They're going to guard the one through four, whoever the be- the two best players are. That's who they're going to guard. Basically, they're going to put Jalen Brunson basically like he's going to be their Steph Curry, or they're going to put him the, on the weakest guy that that score on the other team. Yeah, I can see it. I can, I can, I see Michael Bridges and OG canceling out. Uh, Tatum and Brown. Brown. That's who they're going to have. They're going to have OG on Tatum, and they're going to have Michael on Brown because they're like the same size. OG's the same height as uh, Tatum. They're both 6'8". Um, and then um, um, what's it? Jalen Brown is like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, mm-hmm. And I think Michael Bridges is the same, like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, True. Seven. And then when it comes to the point guard, like the, I think the Celtics point guard, it, no, the Knicks point guard is way better than the Celtics point guard. And the Knicks center is way better than the Nick than the Celtics center, so they gonna win that. Once you count, I mean, once you count throughout the wings, you really I don't think got OG nobody. can guard if OG is healthy. He he's like a Kawhi. It's like that's why the Toronto won the championship because that, remember that was Kawhi and OG on the same team. Mm-hmm. They were shutting everybody down. And I don't th- I think I don't think because uh, OG was able, who's really a, a a small forward, power forward, you know, a natural small forward, undersized power forward that, you know, may do great in your lineup. But he was even able to, whenever they all their centers had got injured, mm-hmm. he was able to guard and beat and, like, not get completely worked. True. Like, which is crazy. And then when it comes to the the temple was, man, I mean, I feel like they went backwards. I mean, yeah, you save money. I mean, I don't know who they're going to be getting in, in, in the season to come. But, I mean, you was like, what, ranked two or three? Top, you can be guaranteed top three. I think they three. were guaranteed top four. They were going to guaranteed probably have home court advantage in the Western Conference. I look for them to maybe take another step. But, honestly, with this, I see them taking a step back. I don't see them taking a step all the way back to a playing team. I see them being in that five and six seed, which is still, you know, guaranteed in the playoffs, not in the playing, but you're not home court. Um, Because I think their spacing is going to be an issue because Julius Randle ain't half as good as a shooter as Carl Anthony Towns. So you're not going to have as much spacing. And then uh, Julius Randle, if he's not shooting at three – He's almost like a Carmelo where he needs to post up and do his stuff, which is hard for him to get his spacing because what's Rudy going to do? He's going to be right there on the block, you know, bringing his guy over there. So I think, honestly, their best lineup will be having Nas Reed at center and Julius out there because you could have Nas Reed space the court and then let Julius do his post-ups. But they're trying to offset that with also DiVincenzo so they don't have to, uh, you know – rely so much on the rookie they drafted uh was it dillingham yeah dillingham and uh yeah because uh you know he they thought he was gonna have to play a major role as a bench player backup point uh scorer but now divincenzo who averaged like 18 points a game last year for the knicks and shot over 40 percent from three that he's gonna uh help them with a lot of the bench scoring so now when they go to their bench 
he'll be their main scorer coming from the bench. And like I said, he'll probably be able to give Mike Conley rest where he's not having to play heavy minutes throughout the season. You get Mike Conley, Mike Conley definitely need – they need another point guard. They need to get Markel Fultz. I think Markel Fultz is also a free agent still. They need a couple. Yeah, because yeah, they, they point guard position is old. But, I mean, we definitely going to keep – Because Chenzo isn't really a point. No, but he not. can ball handle enough to play point, almost like Devin Booker. But he's really good at shooting threes, so he'll space the court. And and Anthony Edwards can handle the ball, too. So I think with both of them being kind of combo guards, they're hoping that they can get it done. But, yeah, it, it is, uh, you know, kind of s- sucks sometimes when you don't have a good backup point guard to run the second unit. But if you got a gunner in the second unit, you don't need a, someone to pass in the ball. He's just going to launch it. Yeah, I can see that. Like Anthony Edwards going to launch it as soon as he gets the ball. But, I mean, hey, we're going to see how this goes. Comment down below how you feel about this trade. Do you feel like the Timberwolves, uh, I mean, they're going to be worse than a 60. They may be a play a play-in team. I don't see them being a play-in. I think they'll figure it out. But I think Julius Randle will definitely get into it with Anthony Edwards and Gobert. Because they'll be like, Gobert, stop bringing your man over here. You're crowding me. <laughs> and then it'll be like it'll be like brushing off Anthony Edwards. And Anthony Edwards will be like, it's my team. And he's like, I'm better than you. I'm Jordan. You're Pippin. Oh, Lord. But speaking of Jordan Pippin, man, moving on, it is time.